Michael Bloor, Seafarers International Research Centre, Cardiff University. Well, I'm a bit of a dinosaur. I've, I started in academic life in 1970, um, so almost 40 years now. Till 1992, I worked for the Medical Research Council at what was the MRC's Medical Sociology Unit, first in Aberdeen and then in Glasgow, it's now called the MRC Social and Public Health Research Unit. Uh, came to Cardiff in 1992 as a senior lecturer, eventually got a chair here. Um, was seconded um, to CFES International Research Centre in 1999. Um, left Cardiff in 2002. Uh, but I've been back here uh, three years now, part-time. I've always, um, always worked in the area of the sociology of health and illness. Um, since I came to CERC, I've had a particular uh, input into seafarers' health and safety, obviously. Um, more recently, I've been particularly interested in the effectiveness of international enforcement of health and safety regulations, and that was a previous ESRC, ESRC grant that finished a, a couple of years ago. Unfortunately for me, this is a, um, an exploratory study because um, we applied for extended funding for this from first of all ESRC and then from the European Research Council. In both cases we're not back. Um, but uh, Helen Sampson, the director of CERC, has found a small amount of money to do um, some exploratory work. Not everybody realises, I don't think, that, that people's self assessment of their health is a better predictor than epidemiological survey instruments in terms of um, future mortality. Even when you control for, um, for various measures of current health status, people who, who evaluate their own health as poor die an awful lot faster than people who evaluate their own health as good. And um, that may mean that we're simply pretty good lay diagnosticians of our own condition, better than a etymological third party. Or it may mean, or additionally may mean, that there's an element of a self-fulfilling prophecy here and that people who, who think their health is poor, that eventually transmutes into poor health through um, through lack of appropriate preventive behaviour. Whatever the, um, the actual nature of the mechanism that's going on there, I think it's indicative of the need for us to look more closely than we have done at um, self-assessments of health and their impact on, on people's future health status. And one conceptual tool for looking at this is um, Mildred Blackster's notion of health capital, where she takes this lay idea that we all believe we have a, sub, a sort of finite amount of health capital to spend over our life. Sometimes we can accumulate it, sometimes it, it's, it's, um, it's conserved, sometimes it's dissipated at an accelerating rate, but eventually we all spend it all. Um, and this is, I think, one, this, this notion is one way of getting at people's self-assessment of, of health. And it obviously is particularly pertinent if we think about health within a work context. And so what I wanted to do um, in the broader study, which didn't get funded, was, was, to, was to look at the relationship between people's notions of health capital and processes of labour intensification and tech, and take a range of um, workers from a range of different industries and uh, and try to produce an overall an overall screening instrument measure for measuring labour intensification across a variety of work settings, and also a generalised uh, 
a generalised sense of how health capital can link in between work experience and, and self-reported health. Uh, instead of that being a large study, it's a small study. It's interviews with, um, qualitative interviews with, with an international sample of seafarers in seafarers' missions, where I'm trying to, to tease out their, their, uh, both their perceptions of labour intensification in an industry which has become notorious for labour intensification through things like reduced crewing levels and uh, increased turnaround times in ports and so on. Tease that out, but also um, tease out how they feel they're spending their health capital. Um, some seafarers talk about spending their health capital in the service of their families. Some people, of course, talk about spending their health capital in the service of their companies. Shipping missions are um, one of the low-hanging fruits of climate change. Um, although they don't get anything like the same amount of publicity as um, emissions from the aviation industry, the um, shipping industry actually emits more greenhouse gas, for example, than, um, than the aviation industry. Also, marine diesel um, is an incredibly dirty fuel which in the past it's been convenient um, to, uh, to simply burn at sea um, because it's, um, it's away and out of sight but there are very high levels of sulphur in it which of course we know is not only bad for human health but also bad for the environment through acidification and, and so on. Um, nitrates and um, particulates which have been associated with a range of respiratory diseases. So bad for seafarers and um, bad for the rest of us. The International Maritime Association has recently introduced international regulations on the control of sulphur levels, um, emission control areas, uh, the Baltic the North Sea and just recently now the coast of North America where levels of permitted sulphur um, in marine diesel have to be progressively reduced. These new uh, sulphur control um, regulations are being introduced at the same time as the IMO is grappling with trying to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. If we have data on, on how effective the current controls are on sulphur, on levels of sulphur emissions, this should feed in quite usefully, we hope, into, into current planning on how, if greenhouse gas regulations uh, come into the industry, how they might be framed in such a way as they stand maximum chance of being effectively enforced. The thing that would particularly interest me is trying to take forward the exploratory work I was talking about, about health capital and labour intensification. By the time I finish the ESRC study on ship emissions, I'll be, um, I'll pass my 65th birthday and I probably won't want to take on uh, another large project that will involve me in data collection and, and um, uh, being a principal investigator with primary responsibility for the analysis and write-up and so on. But if there were other people out there who shared my interest in, in labour intensification and health capital, particularly in relation to the shipping industry, then um, that's something I'd be particularly interested in pursuing if I could maybe, um, if they thought it was appropriate, play a relatively minor role. I'd certainly like to contribute um, my thoughts from the, the earlier exploratory study towards that.